Hello and welcome to another episode of Slam TV. I'm Professor Roger Yang and we've got a fantastic episode for you guys today. Today we're going to talk about measures of relative standing. Luckily for you folks at home, we've got a very special guest with us. He's the Sultan of Stats. He's the 99th percentile of awesomeness and the first percentile of lameness. He's Professor J. Chow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks. Hey Jay, how's it going? Gosh. Pretty good, pretty good, except that I think I'm having a crisis. Another one? I know, yeah. Uh. What is it this time, Jay? Well, I decided to pursue my dream. And <laughs> what dream is that? To be on an American Ninja Warrior. Awesome. So, did you try out or something? Yeah, actually, there was a trial thing over the weekend. Oh, okay. I did the competition and I just got my result. And what was your results? How did it you do? It says, I am the 90th percentile. Great, I'm so happy about it. Wait, 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 wait. 90th percentile in what? It was a trial course, so they timed how fast you can do it. Oh, okay. Right. So you were in the 90th percentile for uh, racing time? Yeah, racing time. Yeah, that's a good thing, right? Uh, maybe we should talk about measures of relative standing with our viewers, Jay. What do you mean by measure? A measure is like a number that gives you some characteristic of uh, the data set or population. Okay, how about relative? Relative means uh, in relation to other contestants. So where you are relative to other people. Oh, because it's a competition. It kind of matters like where you're. Yeah, how did you do compared to other people? Right, how about standing? Standing is actually where you are. Okay. So a measure of relative standing is a number that tells you where you are relative to the other people. Right, right. So like in competition is very important. Very important. Right. I was thinking, why don't we look at some of the uh, simpler measures of relative standing first. Okay. Okay. So what do you think we call the smallest number in our data set? Well, smallest number, it's got to be minimum because minimum means the smallest, right? That's right. That's right. And what do you think the the biggest number is going to be called. Well, if the minimum is the smallest, the maximum should be the largest. That's right. Right? Now, uh, another measure of relative standing we care about is we want to know where the middle of the data set is. Okay. Uh, you know when you have a, a road and there's this sort of giant grassy area right in the middle of the road? Right, you mean the one that you're not supposed to drive over? Yeah, yeah, yeah. don't drive over the grass, Jay. Okay. What do, you, what do we call that little grassy area right in the middle? You mean the median? Yes, that's okay. the median. Okay. So we call the middle number of a data set the median. Okay, makes sense. Why don't we look at uh, an example and uh, help our uh, students understand minimum, maximum, and median. Right, can we use my ninja friend as an example? Because I made some friends at the competition. Oh, you made some ninja friends? Yes, yes. Excellent. How many ninja friends did I you I got make? five ninja friends. So, you see we have these five awesome looking ninjas. What's the first thing we should do? Well, since we need to look at like the smallest, largest, I think it's easiest if we arrange them according to their height. Yeah. From oh, okay. maybe the shortest to the tallest. Okay, we have them in, in order from the smallest to the tallest. Right. Now, uh, what's the minimum going to be? Well, it's the shortest guy. It's just the 64 inches. So 64 will be the minimum. Uh, yeah, actually, he's shorter than you. Wow. What? No, I'm way taller than 64 inches. Okay, okay. <laughs> what about the maximum? Maximum is the tallest one, which is 73 inches in this time. So 73 will be our maximum. Oh. For the median, I see that we have five people, so... Right, so median is the middle guy. So mm -hmm. if you have five... Then third person will be the median. Okay. So in this case, it'll be 68 inches is gonna be uh, the median for us. Oh, okay. Oops, I forgot. I forgot one one other friend. Oops. You have another ninja friend? I know. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Wait, 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 wait. wait. The tall ninja. Yeah. <laughs> Kareem Abdul Jabbar yeah. is one of the greatest Los Angeles Lakers of all time. Lakers? He plays basketball? No, Bruce Lee doesn't play basketball. What are you talking about? I don't know. For some reason, Kareem, I guess, wanted to learn some mad ninja skills. Okay, okay, fine, 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 sure. Anyways, let's add Kareem to our, uh, to your other five ninja friends. Okay. And then we'll, we'll teach our students how to find the uh, median there. Okay. So now we have six friends, mm -hmm. right? So in this case, because we have six, we don't have one middle person. We yeah. actually have two middle 
Oh, numbers. right. Now right. the two middle numbers are 68 inches and 70 inches. Right. In that case, we're going to add them up. You're going to find the average. So you're going to add them up and divide by 2. Oh, okay. So it will be 68 plus 70 divided by 2, we get 69. Ah. So 69 will be the median in this case. Let's take it to the next level. Let's look okay. at something a little bit more complicated. All right. Let's take a look at a quartile. Okay. When you see the word quartile, what word root do you see there? Well, I see quart. Yes. Doesn't quart just mean four? Like how there's four quarters and a dollar? Or like how there's four quarters in a basketball game? Or like how there's four quarts in a gallon? Okay, okay, no more examples. No more examples. So why don't you tell our viewers what the definition of first quartile is, Jay? Well, first quartile means it separates the bottom 25% from the top 75% of the data set. When we were talking about median, what we did was we took our whole data set and then we split it up into two groups, mm -hmm. right? Well, when we talk about quartiles, we're going to split it up into four groups. Right, because quarter means four, so right. that makes sense. So, if you talk about 100% of the data, then when we split up into four groups, each chunk has 25%, right? Okay, okay. So I see the first box contains 25%, mm -hmm. and then each box contains 25%. So first quartile is between the first box and the second box. That's right. So you see how those three red boxes, 25%, 25%, 25% add up to 75%? Right, that's why Q1, which is first quartile, separates the bottom 25%, from the top 75%. Exactly, exactly. Second quartile means 25, 25, so it separates the bottom 50% from the top 50%. That means that the second quartile is really the same thing as the median. Right, because median splits half and half, which is 50% and 50%. So yeah, oh, indeed it is the same it. thing. What about the third quartile? Third quartile, so it's 25, 25, 25, so it separates bottom 75% from the top 25%. Jay, why don't we uh, do a numerical example so our students understand what we're talking about. Okay. So here we have an example. It looks like we have 12 different values. Why don't we find uh, Q1, Q2, and Q3 for this Right, guys. you notice that each group, if you break the, the data set into four groups, mm -hmm. each group has three numbers. Oh, I see that. Right, which is 25% each. Yes. So first quartile will be between the first 25% and the second 25%. So it's right in between the 15 and the 19? Exactly. So how do I find Q1 exactly? So we'll average those two numbers. Oh. So 15 plus 19 divided oh. by 2 will give you the first quartile. Which is 17. 17, exactly. How do I find Q2? Q2, again, is 50% bottom to 50% top. Mm -hmm. So its first two group will give you 50%. So, oh, between so it's right in between the 24 and the 28? Exactly. So 28 plus 28 divided by 2 will give you 26. Got it. And the third quartile? Is the first three boxes, mm -hmm. so in between uh, 37 and 47. Oh, okay, so between 37 and 47, so we average those two guys, 37 plus 47 divided by two, that gives you 42. Right. Cool. Jade, usually we take these three numbers, Q1, Q2, Q3, we throw in the minimum, we throw in the maximum, and we call that number the five number summary. Right, that's a lot of information here, right? It is. Right. Uh, we actually have a graphical interpretation of this five number summary called a box plot. As you can see here, we have an example of a box plot. Right, I noticed there's a box in the middle and there's like things sticking out to the left of whisker. Yeah, and... that, that thing sticking out to the left is called a whisker and the thing sticking out to the right is also called a whisker. Right, so I noticed that 13 is the lowest number. Yes. So that must be the minimum. Correct. And 23 and a half seems to be the largest number, so that's going to be the maximum. Right. And I noticed the box, so there's left end of the box and the right end of the box. The left end of the box, I think, is going to be the lower quartile or the first quartile. And the right end of the box is the third quartile. Yes. Which is Q3. 
So that line, that vertical line in between the two edges of the box must be the median, I guess. We got the minimum Q1, median Q3, and the maximum. Ah, I see. You know, I feel like this graph, this graph probably communicates some sort of information to us. Why don't we look at an example where we help students understand how to interpret the box plot. Okay. So here we have a different box plot. Uh, I see that the whisker on the left is like really long. And, and the whisker on the right is really short. Right, and then each box is supposed to contain 25% of the data set. Oh. So you're saying the left whisker is very spit it out. So 25% of the values are between 1 and 7, but they're right. really spread out. And the right whisker is pretty short, and it contains like the same amount, which is 25% of the data set. Oh, so, so most of the data is clustered on the right between Q3 and the maximum. Right, so... If the whiskers are long, that means data is spread out, and then whiskers short, that means it's clustered and dense. Oh, it's very compressed. Right. I got it. Right. And each section has 25%. Exactly. I think we're finally ready to talk about percentile now. Uh, finally, finally. Good. Yes, let's, let's analyze those race results. So okay. when you see the word percentile, do you see a word root there? Uh, yeah, I see C-E-N-T, cent. Right. Mm. Doesn't that just mean 100? It does. Like a century has 100 years, right? Yes. Or like how the dollar has a hundred cents. cents. Huh. All right. Safe. We're safe. We're safe. We're safe. 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 Yeah. Exactly. So in the past, when we looked at median, we took our data set. We split it up into two groups. Okay. Right. When we talk about quartile. We take our data set. We split it up into four groups. Right. What do you think is going to happen when we talk about percentile? Oh, so you're going to split our data into 100 groups. Exactly. We're going to talk about 100 groups now. Okay, that's a lot of groups. Jay, what do you think 20th percentile is going to mean then? Well, then 20th percentile separates the bottom 20% from the top 80% of the data set. Exactly. Hey, what about the one percenters? Oh, you mean like the Hells Angels? No. Oh. You mean the super rich people? Yeah, you know, the super wealthy. I mean, I'm rich on the inside, but sure. when we're talking about wealth, we mean, you know, super rich monetarily. Okay, sure, whatever. So what percentile is the top 1%, Jay? Actually, they're the, at 99th percentile. Oh, so that means that they earned more than 99% of the population. Right, because when you find the percentile, you arrange from the low to high. Ah, so on yes. the left or the low number to the right is high number. So 99 percentile, you're separating the bottom 99%. From the top 1%. Exactly. So that means the higher percentile is always better, right? I don't think so. I mean, would I want to be a high percentile in terms of speeding tickets? Well, in speeding ticket, low number is better than high number, right? Because right. I want to get zero ticket, not right. five tickets. No. Oh, yeah. Or what about race times? Like, do I want to be in the 98th percentile of race times? Well, for racing time, the small time means you're faster, which is better. And your time is big. That means you're slower. Oh, so Wait Jay. A minute. Do you think you should be happy with a 90th percentile oh. race time for American Ninja Warrior? No, I don't think so. Well, you're still faster than 10% of the people, Jay. Well, I'm slower than 90% of other people. Oh. Don't worry, Jay. With hard work, consistent practice, and a positive mindset, you can achieve your dreams. All right, I'm gonna go train. All right. <laughs> <laughs>